Hey everyone, Amy here with Sublimation and More and Hellbound Designs. In this Photoshop video tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this mug template. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to get you a blank template to start with. Um, there's pretty much two sizes for the mugs, which is 11 ounce and 15 ounce. And you can get the blank templates to start with from coastalbusiness.com. You don't have to purchase anything to be able to download the templates. They make them available for you uh, to download at no ex extra cost. Um, this is one of the things I love about Coastal. I'm going to go ahead and download um, the 15 ounce and the 11 ounce. So when you click on the 15 ounce, if you just come down here to uh, download EPS for Corel or PDF for Photoshop. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do the Photoshop template. And I'm just going to right click and hit save as. I'll save it to my desktop for now. I'm also going to go back and I'm going to do the 11 ounce uh, right here. I'm going to do save as and save that. Okay, so we got the templates all set. So now let's go over to Photoshop. So this was my completed design. <coughs> we're going to um, so we're going to kind of start from scratch. So I'm going to go file open. Okay, let's find that coffee mug design. Okay, so we're going to start with the 15 ounce first. So this is what it looks like when you bring it into Photoshop. Um, working with the layers, I do not care about their uh, text, so I'm going to go ahead and remove that. You can leave that in there if you want, but I don't use it usually, so I'm just going to delete that layer. And then I like to modify these templates for me to use myself. So I'm just going to, um, first thing I'm going to do is just, I'm going to apply the layer mask. <clears throat> and then if you hide that, you'll see that we don't need that either. Oops, yes we do, I'm sorry. So this is going to be your safe area. I always like to make my safe area for some reason a kind of a dark green. I'm just going to kind of get into this here. Try to get this done quickly. And I like my background to be black. Okay, so this is what it looks like. This is your template. This is your background. You really don't need the background. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and delete that. Yeah. And this is what it's what your template will look like to start with. Um, at this point, if you're just starting out with the template, you would want to go ahead and save this as a new template for yourself. Change it from the PDF to the PSD so it's easy to edit later. All right. Okay. All right. So next, I'm just going to go ahead and hide my safe layer. Now, on these backgrounds like this, this is the first thing we're going to want to start with. Okay, so I need to search for my pattern. And I believe it is this one right here. So I'm going to go double click it. I'm going to open it. And this is not a locked layer. It saved as a PNG file, so that's why it's already unlocked. Um, it, I'm going to show you how to edit this pattern so that you can change the colors and customize it to what you want it to. Like I did here, I changed it to blue. So, um, <clears throat> so the first thing you need to do is duplicate the layer. All right. And then I'm going to hide the bottom layer and I'm going to 
come up here and I'm going to do select by color range and I want to choose the black first so you just take your little dropper here and click on anywhere where it's black and as you can see it selects all the black the next thing I'm going to do is come down here to the right hand corner and I'm going to click on add layer mask okay now you can see what it did is it took away all the white so uh, if I click on the bottom layer it'll show that white again okay so I'm gonna go ahead and leave the bottom layer uh, shown and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on the top layer mask thumbnail and then I'm gonna do apply layer mask so as you can see that's one layer without the white just black only and on the second layer we're gonna do the same thing we're going to go up to the top, select by color range, except for this time I'm going to choose the white. And I'm going to come down here to apply a layer mask. And if we hide the top layer, you can see it takes away all the black. So I'm going to right click on the layer mask and then do apply layer mask. So we've got two different working layers here. So. I'm just going to name these <clears throat> top layer pattern one because this is our first pattern we're going to be working with bottom layer pattern two all right at this point I would go ahead and save this uh, I'm just going to save it this just so that we have it program were to stop working or crash you don't have your work wasted okay so now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and get these layers uh, I'm gonna go ahead and link them and I'm gonna drag them over here to my template all right as you can see my pattern is way bigger than my template so and that's okay um, oops We'll kind of manipulate on how we want things later. So for now, I'm just going to bring it up to the top. Not sure what we're going to do with it. Okay, so we have our top pattern. Now we want to go ahead and change that color. So I kind of guessed on this color when I chose it. So I'm just going to put it in my dropper there. Um, so this is where we're going to change the color. If I show you here, I left the black, the background black. Um, so we'd want to make this white pattern and we're going to change it to that color. The easiest way to do it without distorting the pattern is by going to color overlay. And as you can see it automatically changed the black there. So we want to make it that pretty blue. Alright. So I just took the dropper over here and I made it the blue. Now because our background is already black we technically do not need this layer. So I'm going to go ahead and unlink it and just delete it because I don't need this layer. So as you can see, this is our pretty flower pattern. And if you want to make it smaller to, so you get more flower, you can do that. All right. Now at this point, if you want it to fit perfectly to the background, you can hold down your Alt Shift and click between the bottom layer and the background and what that does is that creates a clipping mask so now you don't have any of the excess flower hanging over um, so if I undid that by holding down the alt key and clicking between them as you can see it shows the extra flower around so if you hold down the alt key again and click between those two you've created the clipping mask so I'm gonna leave it like that for now okay so next we want to get our bottom layer which is this it's a, like diamond design so I'm done with this layer I'm just gonna go ahead and no do not save changes I'm going to open that diamond design that I have and we're gonna want to do the same thing here um, to make it customizable for colors so I'm going to duplicate the layer and 
I'm going to hide the bottom layer and I'm going to go with select color range. I'm going to start with black and I'm going to create a layer mask and then I'm going to apply the layer mask. Alright, so there's your top layer. And I'm going to show the bottom and do the same thing. This time we want to get in, make sure we can get in to see the white. So I'm going to do select color range select by the white alright hit OK and apply the layer mask oops wrong button there we go alright now if we hide that you can see only the whites available I'm going to apply the layer mask and <clears throat> and then we have created the same effect if you wanted to change the colors here, you could do uh, color overlay again, and we want that color that I had selected earlier. So go back here to the FX and go to color overlay, and this time I'm going to choose this color. Oops. All right. So that gives you that effect right there. Okay, at this point you could save this again. So I'm going to say top layer pattern and bottom layer pattern. If you wanted to name this correctly, I mean I could I'm going to save it as um, fill layer pattern. And this is going to be the stripes pattern, layer pattern, something to that effect. Doesn't matter what you name it. So, as we're going to save this as a work in progress, so I'm just going to name this diamonds pattern, diamond pattern. All right. Now, again, we don't really need the background, so we just need this top layer. So I'm going to hide that, and then I'm just going to drag this over here to our, our mug template. Oops. And so your background doesn't move, I would go ahead and kind of lock that into place and then unlock it as you need to. Alright, so... If you find that when you're clicking on something and it does not want to move for you, like this is what's going on here. I'm thinking. I'm thinking I have it locked. All right. So up here, where it was keeping me from moving it, it's because I had the auto select select uncheck that. Also, sometimes if you come up here, group will be selected, and that's useful if you are trying to select everything in a group. Um, but uncheck it if you're just wanting to work with the individual layers. Okay, so um, so here's my design, and basically we want this to be a clipping mask as well. So I'm just going to drag it below, actually above, nope, below. And let's see what happens. All right, so. You got to move your layers around. So see how I move this top layer pattern. And the stripes are on top. We don't want them on top. So we need to move this bottom layer below the stripes. And that didn't work either. All right. So we're just going to mess some stuff around. What I would do is just go ahead and resize this. And make it fit right about there. All right, and drag it. Okay, now we're ready to make our horizontal bar, which is nothing more than a horizontal shape. So come over here to your shapes and your left hand toolbar, and you're going to want to take and create your uh, rectangle tool. If you right click on that, you'll see you'll get some more shape options, and this is useful because when we start making the monogram, um, you'll need to 
be able to get into your custom shape tools. But for now, we're going to start with just the rectangle tool. So just draw a rectangle however the size you need it. All right. It can overlap if because it doesn't matter. We're going to make it a clipping ma layer, clipping mask layer again. All right. Um, now what we want to do is make it a gradient. <coughs> Come over here, go to gradient, and I have my gradient already saved. Um, once you create a color gradient that you like, all you have to do is just click on the new button and it'll save it. Okay, and you can even give it a custom name. You can change the colors by using your dropper and change how much you want with the sliders there. Okay, so we also want to go ahead and give it a stroke. So I'm going to do um, white, I believe is what we had on the other design. And we can do it inside, center, uh, plays with the sizes, that gives you something a little bit to look at there. I'm just going to go with the outside and I'm going to start with maybe 10, okay. Okay, so now what we need to do is we need to go ahead and make it a clipping mask. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Get a sip of my coffee. Next, we're ready to go ahead and create the monogram pattern. Uh, yesterday, I spent some time on creating some set patterns. Uh, they're actually shapes. And I will put a link to purchase these shapes to save you the trouble. Um, you can create your own or you can purchase them from other vendors. Um, you can even do a search uh, for custom shapes and you'll find all kinds of cool ones you can download. Uh, but if you want to just purchase them from me, you're more than welcome to. So we come back over here to the shape tool and you're going to right click as I told you before and click on custom shapes. All right. So if you come up to the top, you're going to see a bunch of custom shapes up here. Now, I don't have my shapes loaded. So if you purchase the shapes, this is how you would load them. So I'm just going to go with, uh, I'm going to click on this little tool right here, and then I'm going to do load shapes. And here's my shapes that I've already set up as a package. And they should now be in here somewhere. And there they are. I'm sorry. The HB shape. So uh, let me do that again. Uh, do reset shapes. These are the default shapes that I believe that are in there. Um, if you want to look at these by text, you can choose text, large thumbnails, easiest to do. So these, are, I believe, are what default. So I'm going to go ahead and go with load shapes, and which I believe was this one. OK, so here's the shape that I created. Um, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and right click and rasterize the layer. Now, you're wondering, well, Amy, you had white behind the other one. So that's simple. All we need is another shape. And we just need a circle shape. And we want it to be white. All right. So we're going to also rasterize this shape so that we can change the color. And you don't even have to do that. If you just change your color to white and bring your paint bucket over here and click on the shape, it will tell you that it needs to be rasterized in order to change it. Hit yes. Now, drag this shape below the first shape. You may even have to size it so that you don't have any white on the outside. Um let me come back over here to refresh my memory. Okay. So, yeah, you need to kind of size the circle a little bit. There we go. 
That looks about good. So next thing we'll do is we'll merge the shapes together. So if you click, hold down your shift key while clicking on both shapes, that selects both of them. And then all you have to do is um, you can convert them to a smart object if you wanted to so that you can change these layers later, the colors later. Um, because remember, what I'm teaching you to do here is to be able to change this to any color. So I recommend making a smart object. That way you can change the colors later. So say we wanted this whole entire design to be red and black. I mean, you can just come up here and select your FX tool, your color overlay, and make it red. All right. Your bottom one, same thing. Make it red. And your shapes, double click on your smart object. So you could make, um, you could change this to shred. All right, and <clears throat> you close the smart object in order to reflect the changes. But see, as you can see there, um, you can change these colors quickly with the techniques I'm showing you. For now, I want to step backwards because I want to leave it the color that we were working with. So, <clears throat> so here's your monogram shape. You can name it whatever you want if you want to save it and it is a smart object. Again, smart objects mean that you have to double click on them, click OK, and you open it and, and edit what you want to. When you're changing anything in the smart object, it must be saved to reflect the updates. So again, if I wanted to make this a white color, in order for that to be updated in the main template, you have to save it. I hit edit, Step backwards, file save. Now it's back to where it should be. All right. Now the last thing is the font, which is fairly simple. Um, I don't remember what font I use, but to make it easier, we will just come over here and uh, there are my two fonts. I'm just going to click on them and I'm going to drag them to over here and then I'm going to figure out what font it is over here. Okay. We're also going to need to size, resize so it fits in there good. All right. So this background font, which is the big H here, is if I click on it and then click on text. It is a Bakersfield old face font, okay? Um, and basically, I have the op op opacity set to 55%. You can go lighter, go darker, make it full white, okay? But I think I like it how it was, so I'm going to turn it back, okay? Um, you can also name this because if you're going to sell this, um, like, you know, as a design, you'd want to name this something. So, monog um, letter last name or last name letter. And then just make this last name. Oops. Or first name or just name in general. Okay, because you can do the H. But then if you want the name, you can do that, all right? And then you just have to resize it to make it fit in there. I personally, I would like it either way. And the font on this is, uh, this font right here looks like Champigeon. Um, most of these fonts I get probably off of defont.com. I'll put a link on that, but that's a pretty common font. Um, just go back to hail. I liked it better that way. Okay. So here is your uh, entire template ready to go. Here's your safe areas. 
all right? Um, you would want to save this as your template at this point. Um, I'm going to go with... I'm going to go to my D drive. My uh, mug templates. Digital templates. Sublimation. Mugs. Okay. I'm just going to name this Hailbound. Pretty monogram. Monogram mug. Alright, so that's what I'm naming it. So now I can use it in any time. Like I said, and I showed you how to change the colors and manipulate this around. Um, now we have it as a 15 inch. I always start, um, as 15 ounces, I'm sorry. I start with the bigger and go smaller. So now what we need to do is go ahead and open up that 11 ounce. Okay. And, uh, wherever that may be, where to go, where to go. All right, there it is. All right. This template was a little bit different. Um, so basically I'm going to duplicate the layer, get this ready as a working template. I'm going to change this to my pretty neon green I like. All right. And then I'm going to take my wand tool and delete the outside. So this is my safe area. And this is going to be my working background. All right. All right, so we have this. You'll want to save this as well as a template. So I'm just going to save it as 11 ounce mug template. All right, don't need the safe area. So now basically what we're wanting to do is we need to grab all of this and we're going to drag it over to the 11 ounce. Okay. And as you can see, you can just move everything around to make it fit exactly. And, and that's all you got to do to make it fit to the 11 ounce. It's just by dragging and dropping it. Now, one last thing I'm going to show you guys. It's easy to use these templates for any of the substrates. So let's go ahead and open another template. Let's do a bone case, which we all know how to do. So, digital templates, uh, phone cases. Let's do this uh, Galaxy Edge Plus. Okay, so here's my Galaxy Edge Plus. Let's go ahead and take this entire template and turn it into a phone case. So again, with everything uh, highlighted over here, we're going to just drag it over here to my phone case template. Now, you're going to need to resize everything to make it fit because it's enormous right now. Okay. And that looks actually pretty good. So the next thing you'll do is you'll want to do is a clipping mask. So you'll just start with the bottom, hold down your Alt key do the next one, the next one, and the next one. And there may be a way to do this, you know, quicker to get them all clipping mats, but this is kind of, um, that's the only way I know right now. So here you go. So um, here it is. And if you want to shrink it down a little more, you can do that. It's really totally up to you. I would shrink it down a little more and then make the monogram bigger. So with that being said, you just need to take that and those three items and just make them a little bigger. All right, and there you go. You have a phone case. So that is how simple it is to work in Photoshop. I'm sorry if this video took too long, but I kind of wanted to 
show you how I create things. It doesn't take a long time. Uh, if, if you have the time and you're wanting to learn, I recommend watching all of our videos because you're going to learn lots of good tips and tricks. If you don't have the time or the experience, I encourage you to purchase templates from all of our uh, designers that we have over in our sublimation uh, for sale and detach group. Again, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.